So let's talk about really old rings. No, not that one. Oh, that's the one. So with the Xbox showcase in just a few more days, I thought now would be a perfectly good time for us to talk about everything we know so far about Elden Ring, as we may potentially get some more information at the Xbox showcase. Mi Miyazaki, please, please. I'm, I'm going hollow, please. It may feel like we've had literally nothing to go off of since we had that glorious trailer back in E3 2019, but there have been some interviews with Miyazaki that have brought to light some more characteristics that we can expect from Elden Ring when we do at long last get some news. So I've scoured through these interviews and everything that Miyazaki has said about the game so far so that I could collaborate all this information for you guys and bring to light all of the key things that have been stated that I feel like is good for us to know and then helps us speculate a lot more with what Elden Ring is going to be like in comparison to some of FromSoft's earlier games. So guys, if you like this format of video and you'd like to see more of it from me, then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Anyway, let's talk about some Elden Ring, shall we? So let's start with Elden Ring's development. More accurately, when it started. Elden Ring entered the early stages of development immediately after the Dark Souls 3 DLCs were finished, so this puts the majority of Elden Ring's development time alongside Sekiro, with them being worked on simultaneously. However, development peaks of the games were separated out slightly so as to give time for Sekiro to get its full development cycle out and game released, as we know, allowing then Elden Ring's development to really take the forefront as Elden Ring is designed to be such a bigger game compared to Sekiro and Dark Souls. Elden Ring is designed to have a slightly different genre and gameplay style to FromSoft's earlier games. It's designed to be a lot more of a third-person action RPG as opposed to the more action-adventure that the previous Sekiro was based on, and Dark Souls, although kind of RPG, they said that they really wanted to bring the RPG elements really into the forefront here, while also maintaining the focus on melee combat the From Software is famous for. Elden Ring is intended to keep the From-like difficulty style, however, to really keep it in line with From Software's Sekiro, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, and really contain challenging and terrifying enemies for a lot of players, which will require most players to face them a few more times to really get used to them before they can so confidently take them on. From Software's main goal with this more RPG-centric game is to provide a lot more player variety and player choice of playstyle than most of their previous games. They wish to keep the aspect of many weapons and magics and, and so on and really allow the player to engage an enemy how they want to tackle an enemy in their own strategy a lot more than they've ever done with previous games. With From Software's previous title providing us a already created protagonist that we play as and not our own character, um, it's reasonable for some people to be worried that that might be the case with more future titles, but luckily we have had it confirmed that the Elden Ring main character will be a player created customizable character a lot more like Dark Souls rather than Sekiro, so we can expect a lot more of this. Oh, isn't he magnificent? So many of you may already know that uh, George R. R. Martin is going to be collaborating with the Elden Ring works, and this is incredibly interesting. Uh, the best part is the fact that it all stems from Miyazaki being a huge fan of George R. R. Martin, and more importantly, particularly a fan in Fever Dream, a vampire fantasy a novel written by George R. Martin, so much so that he even recommends it uh, to new employees at From Software to read this when they start their jobs there. So many of us will be more familiar with George R. R. Martin's work A Song of Ice and Fire, uh, at the name of the novels, or Game of Thrones, the name of the series. The interesting caveat to the work with Elden Ring here, however, though, is that 
he will not actually be working on any of the main story or any of the timeline that the player will be taking place in at all in fact so Martin's work is solely on the mythos of the world so he is going to be designing the backstory you know what happened in these lands a hundred two hundred thousand years ago and his works will have no direct influence over the time period that the main character will play in. Miyazaki wanted to maintain the typical From Software style and the way that they write their stories, very sort of driven to visually tell a story um, with areas and things like that for players to explore and experience and felt that a novelist wouldn't necessarily be able to write the games in the same way that they write the games but having him write the mythos of the world would definitely allow them to have a lot of things to draw upon and base their game around. The biggest difference to say Dark Souls that Elden Ring is going to hold is this big vast open world that they keep talking about. However Miyazaki did clarify that there are many different definitions to the world with open world and he's not 100% sure if he's using it exactly correctly so we shouldn't expect to see a traditional open world as the way he said it is that they have tried our own approach to a game with a large open field to play in so this implies that yes the world is going to be more open than say Dark Souls which has quite sort of linear pathing yes usually many different routes and shortcuts for you to take but there's a lot of singular rooms adjacent rooms and corridors whereas this is going to be quite a vast open fields for you to explore across a world think breath of the wild maybe but it's definitely going to have more of a from software taste to it so maybe not exactly what all of us would expect so miyazaki confirmed that the actual open environment, the world itself, is still going to contain a lot of danger and threats for the player to overcome, so expect lots of enemies to be out in these open worlds, perhaps even discoverable bosses that we, you know, you may not have even realized were there that are guarding a whole cave or, or a field or down by some lake, but there's also going to be plenty of areas for the player to explore all are going to be very intricately designed with great interiors and multi-layered castles and such so it's really starting to sound like we're going to have these big open areas that you would expect from an open world rpg but also with the much grander much more detailed interiors that from software's games like dark souls are quite famous for obviously if anyone's played games like skyrim i'm pretty sure you probably have uh, you know that things like the castles can really feel quite bare and, and empty and quite unrealistic like you might go into a, a castle and there might be a set of stairs up to some useless platforms and maybe there's a bedroom off to the side and a kitchen there but in Dark Souls you know that the areas are very very intricately designed and they've said they want to maintain this level of detail to their interiors so the interiors of, of the game will probably feel a lot more like a Dark Souls game while also providing us with this open world for us to explore and move from castle to castle rather than say traveling by a bonfire. So with this vaster and more open world it's good to know that we are going to have horseback riding in order to be able to get us around this land. This is definitely a interesting uh, new sort of change for us to have is to be able to ride these horses around the world. However, they did clarify that unlike in something say The Witcher 3, we're not going to be able to take these mounts into the interiors or into like the villages or anything like that they are strictly going to be for the open world traversal so when you arrive at some kind of town or village or or whatever you are going to dismount and you will be walking around that on foot uh this is to sort of keep the sort of atmosphere um of these areas to what they want to portray 
rather than having you you know running around on your horse in the in, like bashing into people especially with a from software style game where you know harming an npc can very often turn them against you bumping into them with your horse is probably a surefire way to have that npc npc attack you and as we all know if we've played dark souls killing an npc can be devastating if you didn't really want to do it so with all of that in mind elden ring is really starting to sound like a very interesting title to me um obviously Obviously, all of the aspects that I've spoken about today can easily change. Uh, these interviews have come from quite early in the, its development cycle, and they could have changed their mind on any number of these, but it's still a sort of good idea of the mind frame that From Software is, was in when choosing to develop this game. Hopefully, we'll get some more information very soon. Please please show some more Elden Ring at this Xbox event in a couple of days because I think at this point we really all just need it. So thanks for watching the video guys, uh, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and hopefully we'll have some more information to talk about very soon and we can make more videos. I'll see you in the next one guys.